Hello everyone, my name is Frank Anthony and welcome back to Let Me Be Frank. So this is season two, episode four, otherwise known as episode 16. I think for the future I'm gonna start doing um, the numbers that way so that um, it just makes more sense for the audience and stuff instead of saying um, episode four again and again and again each season because there's already a season one episode four. I think I'm just gonna do like 16, 17, 18. We could celebrate the 50th episode, the 100th episode. However, um, as you can see on the screen, we have a special guest today, oh, Monica special. Lee. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well and glad you're all supporting Frank's podcast of Let Me Be Frank. Oh, oh and this is Teddy. Yes, that that's nice of you to say. I actually don't, I don't ask the audience how they are. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. I should probably do that more. I'm I do in thank mental them for health. The I care. <laughs> I do thank them for the support. We do have another. I almost forgot. Yeah, we have a special guest and a half. We have Teddy. Um, can I say his last name or? It's is Theodore it Linus Bruschi. That's his entire name. There we go. <laughs> but Teddy for short. <laughs> Ted's McGee. So yes, we have <laughs> him as well joining us. I feel and like an evil evil person like who's like petting their cat coming up with diabolical plans to take over the world <laughs> and hair in my face so before we get into the topics that we wanted to get into today figured um monica's guest starred if you do follow the podcast she oh my god what episode were you i don't remember the exact you were uh, on season one episode was i later on in season one nine i don't know i want to say a little bit later but not too late <laughs> <laughs> just um, just in time I don't just in time but I... <laughs> but she was a special guest on yes. season one and um, and also the only I think in-person guest and once again you're in person thank you yep. for coming no out no problem <laughs> thanks for having me we're both um I, there's there's hair going in my <laughs> face that's I'm not just swatting flies or air just so we know I'm only swatting if it's about to go in my mouth. Teddy? <laughs> we don't want that. This One this of our helps. special guest sheds. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> so we didn't get into... I want to say we just kind of jumped into the topic. Mm -hmm. On season one, we didn't really get to... It happened with um, another, you know, Emmy guest start again on season two. And she was also in season one. And we didn't get too much... I, I personally didn't get too much into the guests themselves. For you guys out there who don't know the guests personally, like I do, you can get to know a little taste of them, a little, <laughs> little, little, little taste. Just a little smidge. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, and also I got some notes on my lap, just in general. <laughs> it's a good thing one of us is on top of how this is going to go. <laughs> well, guests kind of help me stay on track. You're not the best example guest. Not this that. guest. This guest does not have that skill in her skill set. So it's we not on my resume. We will we will see. But okay. <laughs> so tell us a little bit of who you are as a person. And um actually the way I worded it is if you were a novel, what would the back of the book say? Oh god. <laughs> like how would you yeah describe it? Say yourself? some really scary stuff. Um <laughs> Not for human interaction. No, um, <laughs> it would probably say that I'm a very complex person, um, just in the sense of like, there's so many, I'm like an onion, like Shrek. <laughs> Let's go to the Shrek reference. I, I have layers, <laughs> like a stinky old onion. Um, <laughs> but the, the, Monica's novel, Big Stinky Onion. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I would say that I'm a very active thinker when it comes to just like how I am. There isn't a single moment of the day where I can turn my brain off. Um, I would say that I'm a compassionate person. I'm a very easily distracted person. <laughs> uh, I'm very family oriented. I'm goal oriented. I really like to keep things organized. And I, the more scattered my environment is, the more scattered I get. Um, I love humor, anything to do with laughing or making somebody else laugh. I'm usually very much into that because I think it's one of the best ways to just cope with life. Definitely. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what else it would say. Like I said, it'd say a bunch of scary stuff of like, <laughs> be warned of this human being. 
<laughs> like, if you could choose one author that would write your novel, would it be Stephen King? <laughs> uh, I don't know if any of them would have the, the guts to do it. <laughs> I don't know if any of them would want that as, like, a part of their resume of, like, here, I wrote this one. Oh, you're the one. Like, I, I don't know. Written um, by Ted Bundy. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um... Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know who I would choose. There's, there's a lot of different books that I've read over the years. Um, but as far as like having a favorite author or anything like that, I don't have any that really stand out to me. I guess, um, I should say really stand out to me as in above the rest, but I guess Kurt Vonnegut would be an interesting, hmm. an interesting author for that book. <laughs> It's got to be called Big Stinky Onion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Must be called Big Stinky Onion of a human being. Or like, um, I was just thinking like Monica Layers. Monica Lears. <laughs> <laughs> That's the winning pick. That's the one. <laughs> we now have the title. <laughs> Publishing soon. <laughs> <laughs> On Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Right, right. <laughs> um... It's so funny, too, just thinking about, like, now there's a visual aspect to this podcast. So the, there'll be certain visual cues that happen where the audio people will be like, what are they, they doing? Know. And <laughs> uh, my, meanwhile, on camera, there's no sound, but it's just... Yeah, it's just voguing. <laughs> yeah, and then they're going to see, like, all of our antics and all of the times where I end up looking away because I get distracted by something or I'm trying to think and I can't. Dust just, particles? I can't just, like, look into the camera and think for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm a strange person. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Continuing in this wonderful interview that's already going swimmingly. So, um... So I started this with saying for the type of work that you do, because I thought in your About Me there you would mention work, um, at all. <laughs> like, at some point you didn't. <laughs> so, um... What's, what can you, um, when it comes to your work, what can you, like, mention? Um, what can you talk so about? So, I have, basically my career set right now is in mental health and social services. Um, but I have had a lot of experience in various aspects of that work. And I'm continuing to grow my experience as I've only been, technically only been in this field for about, um about five years or so. Uh, and that's once I graduated college and actually got into this work, not counting any of the times where I volunteered at things in the past because my mom is in this field, so I've helped her at different events and whatnot. But um, some of my jobs have included um, working in a hospital on a locked inpatient psych unit. I've also done outreach work my goal long term is to uh, go into private practice as a therapist and my population would probably be teenagers and young adults. Uh, that would be my main focus, I would say, but I'm kind of just enjoying experimenting with different jobs in this field and really finding what I really like for the time being. I'm really enjoying that part of it right now. That's good. Where, um, with like the mental health field, mm -hmm. where do you know where that passion came from? Do you know like yes. why you wanted to get in this field? You mentioned that family's yes. also in this field. Did that have anything to do with it or? That did actually. So when I was, when I was a kid, I was one of those kids that like pretty much every year I had a new dream job of when I was an adult. Like a lot of kids say like astronaut and cowboy or something crazy. Mine. I, sorry, funny thing. <laughs> when you say that, one of I had a bunch like firefighter and stuff. Yeah. One of mine was president. And then I remember I didn't want to become president because I was like, well, not anyone can be president, but. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> no, but seriously though, that is so funny that you said that because president was one of mine. I was like, I'm gonna be the first female president. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Here I come, world. I was gonna say you still could <laughs> like, be. <laughs> no, no, the world doesn't want that. <laughs> like, the world does not want that. <laughs> But, so, Big smelly onion will be sold and read in every school <laughs> curriculum. I'm literally never going to have my name back now. I'm just going to be a smelly onion for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, 
So, um, no, I, uh, that was one of them, but that was like a very brief, my presidential run and campaign was very brief as a child. <laughs> Um, I wanted to be a prosecuting attorney for a long time. I wanted to be, um, a cop at one point, not just any cop, a detective. I wanted to be, um, a veterinarian. I wanted to work with animals and I was really actually focused on the animal thing, either being a zoologist or a veterinarian or something where I would have hands on with animals all day. And that would be my job. I mean, who doesn't want that yeah. exhibit A? <laughs> um, but so that was in high school that I was really focused on that. I was watching animal channel, the animal planet channel, like all the time, every, every free minute of my time, I was watching stuff from there. I was researching things online, reading on them in books. And ultimately I went through quite a bit in my childhood and in high school and because of what I went through in my own personal experience, which included bullying, um, coming from a broken mm -hmm. home, things like that, I really started changing my perspective on where I wanted to go in life. And of course it inspired me that my mom had also been in the field and, you know, I kind of wanted to do what she did because she did it and I'm so, you know, family oriented like that. <laughs> so there was that connection too, because I'm such a sentimental person. Um, and then there were some people who really inspired me, uh, some of which I'm still lucky to call friends, like this one. <laughs> um, so... So yeah, I, I started getting into looking into mental health for my future and then it just kind of took off from there and I ended up graduating from stick like my mom did and then I just kept going and here I am. <laughs> and <laughs> here it, I am world. <laughs> here I am world. And it's just been one kind of job after another um, with with the goal of having different different experiences in the field in order to one, assess that I definitely want to stay in this field and become a therapist, which has been my primary goal from day one, but also just to learn all these different aspects. Because for any of you who have never worked in social services or mental health services, and for those of you who are completely oblivious to how the system works, there are thousands of different resources. There's thousands of different populations, different rules, regulations. There's all kinds of things to learn once you actually get into this field. So um, that's been kind of a really important thing for me is to learn as much knowledge as I can and use it to hopefully fuel whatever I decide to do with private practice at some point. <laughs> nice. Thanks. With, um... Yeah, so with, like, learning, you know, because obviously, like, you mentioned school and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. we went to school for psychology, and it's interesting the stuff that you learn, and then it's kind of, I guess, like, many jobs out there. You learn stuff in school, but then when you actually get in the field, it's like, whoa, that was very different. <laughs> so what are um, some things you wish you knew before going into some of these jobs oh, that you know boy. now? I wish I knew just how helpless I would have to be in certain situations. And I say that to say that there are many times where you will want to help the person entirely. You'll want to just like uh -huh. take your fingers and just snap and just make everything better. And you have to have this acceptance of okay, but there's a system in place here and you have to go by the rules of the system. And there aren't really many ways to get around that. And I think kind of just when you get out of college and you start in this, I'm speaking to this specific field, when you start in this specific field, you kind of have this sense of like, that you're looking to be the fixer for situations. Mm. But then when you actually start these jobs, you learn that there are some things, quite a bit actually, that you're going to be able to help with. And you might not always be able to help as much as you want or in the way that you want. And then there's other things that you just might not be able to 
help with. And that could be based off of your own limitations or the system's limitations. Um, but you just have to do the best you can and accept that and know what your limitations are. That's one of the most important skills you can oh, have yeah. in this field. And you just have to know that whatever you are doing, put your best effort into it. And there's no way that something good won't come out of it. So that's, that's one of the things I wish I learned prior to jumping into these field or jumping into these jobs. Sorry. Yeah. And there's a lot, there's a lot of ethics behind oh, this field too. And it's like, yeah. if you go again, if you act um, unethically, you could definitely get into some serious trouble. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it could basically completely end your career and you would have to then pick a new career path and then you back carry... to president. Yeah. Back to presidency. <laughs> Sorry, world. Um, <laughs> so, I, I mean, it, it's, there. there's a lot of things that you kind of wish you knew. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. So there's a lot of things that we would wish we know before something happens. But this field is, is, one of the things I love about it is it's a constant learning experience. I always have the mind of a student in just about every aspect of my life. I always love to learn. I, I really miss, I'm one of those weirdos that really misses school and I, I would, right? Like, and I would love to just go back and sit and just take in information all day. Um, that was the thing I loved the most about school. I wasn't always so excited about doing all the work that was involved because there's a lot, especially in college, but yeah. I definitely loved the experience of being able to take in information that somebody's presenting to you. Um, so that's one of the perks to me being in this field is that I constantly am learning all the time. That's great. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm, I was that student waking up at six, six thirty in the morning, writing papers. <laughs> this one. <laughs> I think, I think we actually talked about that in the last podcast. Did we? I think, that's funny. I think I brought that. That's, we'll say it every time. Yeah. That specific <laughs> instance. I think I brought that up when I, I we know. had a sleepover once and I wake up randomly, I think probably to use the bathroom or something. This one is up at 6.30 working on an English essay <laughs> on the weekend. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what was I going to do? Like, I had to wait until you woke up. I didn't know what else to do. Couldn't just, like, rummage for snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you very easily could. I could have, you. but I just, I don't know. <laughs> I felt like the closest thing to me at the time was the computer that I had brought. And he didn't do anything fun on it. He just decided, <laughs> I'm just going to write essays because I can function that well at 630 in the morning. Me, on the other hand, I cannot. <laughs> no, but once it, yeah, then fast forward to like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. And, <laughs> and he's out. Monica's like partying and just <laughs> yeah. like ready to go and work. And I'm just yep. like, I got the curlers in my <laughs> shaved head <laughs> going like I'm ready for bed like I'm just like this old man that's yeah sometimes he'll be like falling asleep at like 9 30 he'll be like yawning on the couch and like nodding off and then me on the other hand that's when I'm ready to go I'm a night person so you get you get me around that time I'm like yep I'm ready here I go <laughs> ying and yang ying and yang <laughs> ying yang <laughs> um you were, before we started this episode too, you were talking about, um, one thing I love to hear about is when people I know, or just people in general are working on creative projects because I'm working on a book myself and stuff. And you talked about how you were, um, or are working on a couple different stories, a couple different books. I Can am. you talk about what those are about or any information yes. on those? So one of them, I, it's so funny because their genres are so like drastically different. Um, or at least their topics are so drastically different. But uh, one of them is a romance novel and it's about this young woman who, and I do have actual, I was joking with him about this before we started. I do have actual names for these uh, two novels that I'm working on, but I can't remember what they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I have them written down with the drafts that I'm working on, but I cannot remember what I decided to name them. So um, I can give you at least the, the topical stuff. So it's this young woman who has a lot of fear in commitment and has a lot of fear in jumping into relationships, even when it's the right person, even when it's the person that she has the feelings for. She doesn't know how to 
fully commit to that person. She wants to kind of like, you know, not get too close, but be close enough to have something and not be alone. So it's kind of loosely based off of some of my younger dating experiences um, with myself. It's kind of loosely based off of that one idea and then like taking it and committing to it entirely. Um, just imagine if you were like updating this to like your current love life <laughs> and just like you're writing about daily things. He didn't take out the trash yesterday. <laughs> yeah, literally my current love life is so different from what it used to be like, I guess you could say. Um, not that, I don't know. It's just, this is the longest relationship I've ever been in. It's, it's, um, you know, the one that's become the most serious. So it's, it's just, it's different going from dating here and there to having a real serious commitment with somebody and you're now living that commitment. Um, but so this woman, she has the right guy. And he's all about her, right? He's he's fully invested, fully committed. And she runs off scared of this commitment that he is, you know, really running after with her. And she learns from this woman who has had numerous life experiences and love experiences. Through talking with her, she learns how to try to overcome that fear. Um, that's that's the goal and the basis of the story and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different parts to it but that's one of them okay. the other one is w about a serial killer <laughs> um, <laughs> i love dark and twisty things i just can't not have them in my life so so this one is about this man who kind of takes on this vigilante role and there's a really like religious reason behind every kill. Um, and I, I just started this one out, so there's not a whole lot to it yet, but I'm working on developing it more. But the idea is all of his kills, he, he knows murdering is wrong, but he believes there's a justified reason for every kill he commits. Um, and the backstory to why that is, is all to come once everything is finished. Nice. Um, these are taking me a little bit longer than I thought I, or than I would like, I should say. I started them a good amount of time ago, um, but they're, they're slow developing, but they're there. <laughs> so, so those are the two main ones. And then I have a bunch of like poetry, other short story type things. And every time I write, I always write with, I always write as if I'm watching it on a movie screen. That's, that's how I picture the novel because I want my novels to be as, um, I want them to paint a picture and I want the person to be able to visualize them as much as they can as they read. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I try to go for. I always write them as if they're going to become a movie just to have that visual aspect be really emphasized. Nice. Um, also, just to let the audience know, we're going, I will put Monica's contact email in the description of the episode instead of like having her spell it out and please don't have me spell <laughs> it out. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a long doozy. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. <laughs> I also have one more question for you. Yes. However, um, the question goes into our topics. So I Ooh. think I'm going to just save it Lovely. for after the commercial okay. break. So we are going to take a quick commercial break. We will be right back. And we are back with Monica and Teddy. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> he just likes to sleep. So that question that I wanted to get into was... Um, like I said, it was connected to the topics that we're going to get into and that are also in the title. So um, how how important is communication to you? And what type of communicator do you mm. see yourself as? Whew. So as far as putting a label on me as a communicator, I I have a hard time just like putting it down to like one or two words or anything like yeah. that. But I... I'm a very open communicator, and I wasn't always like this, by the way. My communication styles have changed over the years. Definitely same. Right? So, for me, I would say that 
I'm very open and I need, I need to talk about more than the average person, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like there's a lot of insecurities and anxieties that I have as a person. So sometimes I'll have moments where I can't really work those out just myself without actually communicating about them, even if it's something small. But when I do talk about stuff like that and it's like something smaller that's not as important, I really do my best to just treat it as such and treat it as something small to where I'm just looking for added understanding or, um, you know, some sort of resolve in my confusion is what I'm looking for, I okay. guess. So, so I, I really, I need to talk about a lot. Communication is very important to me. It is, it's the basis for my romantic relationship, for my family, my friends. It's, I'm a very big communicator. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I would view myself the same. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say the same thing when you were talking about how, um, we change our communication changes over time. Yeah. Cause I, I know specifically the topic we're going to get into. One of the communication ones is friendships when it comes to the interpersonal mm -hmm. relationships. But I just think about, um, in, in a romantic sense, how, I felt like I always had to just say every single little thing in my mind. And I think my communication changed a little bit over time because I realized the responses I was getting, and friendships too, the responses I was getting from just being so blunt and vocal about every little thing, I kind of had to decide um, how I was going to like pick and choose my battles. Yeah. And that's why I view, I mentioned in past episodes, how I view things as small and big issues now to kind of help gear that way because um i also didn't realize too back then that everyone has different communication styles and that we don't all communicate the same and that there's actually i oh i did write i wrote it <laughs> I, I, I i like writing the quotes i come i come by some random quotes online you actually and, wrote it and this, I'm proud. Uh, thank you and this one um this one i thought i found it to be interesting it's just because someone doesn't communicate like you, it doesn't mean that either of you are wrong. It just might mean you're wrong for each other, which mm -hmm. I found a little interesting. That I don't think that's always the case. Yeah. Because you can still connect with someone that you have a completely different communication style with. But I do, that did make me think about certain friendships and relationships that yeah. we weren't maybe the right match. What it made me think about, and that quote actually went in a different direction than I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to say, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It, or no, sorry. I didn't say, I didn't think it was going to say that. I thought it was going to say, it doesn't mean that you don't care about the person or the person doesn't care about you. It just means that you guys have to meet in the middle with your communication. Yeah. Like I thought that was a really bad um, quote example, but I thought it was going to say something like that to yeah. that effect. Um, I actually didn't think it was going to be like, oh, well, cut ties. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, it's been a no, good I one. Know, yeah, nice doesn't... try. <laughs> With certain people, I think, yeah, maybe it is better to cut the ties, but obviously like to be, I, I feel like, um, being an effective, proficient communicator, you can get through most of, mm -hmm. Um, those types of situations with different communicators. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've definitely had a lot of experiences, um, and I'm gonna really try to keep this geared towards friendships. Our yeah. last episode that we did together, we focused heavily on romantic relationships, so I'm yeah, gonna try true. to keep, um, my examples based off of that. But I have had a lot of experiences where the friend will communicate extremely differently, than me and sometimes it is for that end result of we're just not a good mesh for to have in each other's life and other times it's simply that I need to meet that person halfway in the way they communicate and they need to meet me halfway in the way that I communicate because you're gonna have each person when they communicate has different needs and you have to find a way to have your needs met and not sacrifice too many of them, but also yeah. not let the other person sacrifice all their needs either and meet their needs. So it's it's a, a really, it really is a give and take game. Um, even as friendships, it can be, it can be confusing and hard to navigate sometimes. 
No, definitely. There's, yeah, because usually um, there's a lot of different types of, like, I would say communications or communicators. Mm -hmm. But I know, like, two main ones are either, and I liked the wording of it that I saw, um, just those common phrases of either you, there's the people that put everything on the table mm -hmm. and there's the people that sweep things under the rug yes. <laughs> to, like, analogy <laughs> type Ugh. things. Like, I feel like those are definitely the two common types and um yeah i would say w we're more so the putting it on the table yep i um over time though i know with certain people or with certain situations i notice i will i guess some of the things that maybe i view as smaller issues that might not be small issues to other people those are the types of things that i could admit maybe i try to sweep under the rug mm -hmm. now because i think it's more of me trying to pick and choose the battles yeah. and not well, not feel like there's going to be an argument over like... Right. And you go with your perspective on it too, which in, in those cases, your perspective is, well, this is small anyways. Let's just like erase yeah. it as quick as possible and move past it because it's small. But that's the other thing you have to gauge too in conversation and resolving conflict with friends. You have to figure out, all right, you know, this might be small to me, but it's kind of big to them. So, you know how realistic is that is either one of our views are we both kind of skewed or is one person really more skewed and how do you figure out how to get through that and it's all dependent on the styles of communication that you both respond to and that's the thing too you're not you're not doing how do i put this when you're communicating with a friendship you're not trying to communicate in the way that you would receive it best oh yeah no. you're trying to communicate in the way that the other person would receive it best because you're that's a part of meeting the other person's needs um it's the same principle i think i talked about it in the um last episode we did with romantic relationships you're yeah. always trying to say something or do something being cognizant of the way that the other person would receive it which i which unfortunately I don't think a lot of people or enough people do. I mean, some people do it, but I think a lot of people are still on that whole, um, I don't want to say like the me mindset, but, me, me, me. but the, we but have the, a running joke about that word, <laughs> but the mindset of, um, yeah, that because the other person isn't acting the way or treating a situation the exact same way that we would, mm -hmm. we almost might assume that they don't care as much as we do or that they're not as good of a friend as we are or, right. or something when that's not always the case. No, it's absolutely true. And I think that this goes with the mindset that a lot of the world seems to have right now. And they, a lot of people like to hear themselves talk. Um, and they really think that, you know, they're, their voice and what they have to say matters most. Unfortunately, that's the mindset of a lot of people on a day-to-day -day interaction. Um, but in reality, listening is just as important, if not more important, than speaking. Yes, your voice matters. Yes, what you have to say is important. Yes, it sh it's not irrelevant. But you still have to take into, the, into account that the other person also is important. The other person also has important things to say that are not irrelevant. So just as those things are all true about you, they're also true about everybody else that you interact with. And I think that that's really difficult for a lot of people to grasp nowadays because we don't really have, as a society, that team mentality. No. We have very much uh, everybody for themselves mentality and it's just disgusting, really. Speaking of teams too, something that I didn't think about for this conversation until this morning mm -hmm. was is um how is all the different ways that we create friendships how we meet mm -hmm. people it's not always just from like we met through school True. um there's and also the class that we were taking was um choir which was a common interest <laughs> Well, of singing, but no, we're, we're big fans of the choir. Can I just tell you guys, he didn't like me that much at first. You were, you were very loud. Oh, that's, that's a word for me. <laughs> well, we were also very different people at yeah. that time yeah. compared to now. But it's funny because you were a certain way in school. 
But anybody that yeah. knew you in your private yeah, life, that too. you were more loud like me. Oh yeah, I was so super... It's, it's really interesting. And, and I actually, that class, he got to see, I would say, the real me. Um, because when I was in a class that I didn't feel comfortable showing my real self because of bullying and all the other things I was dealing with at school, I would not be as loud unless I was with my comfort zone, which was my friend group and things like that. Um, so that class, he got to see more of who I really am. And I was definitely more on the obnoxious, like loud, giddy side back then. I mean, I still am, but not, I, I'm more controlled now. <laughs> we'll see. And for me in choir, I was bullied. Um, my, one of my first high school years. Yeah. So that, um, so it was kind of like I took a year off after that. And then going back was when we had met. <laughs> and so I'm kind of like, I felt like I was almost like walking into like this landmine where I like kind of just had to be careful because I didn't know. <laughs> I not, was a landmine. Not you. <laughs> You're a grenade. No, but... <laughs> No, but, um, I just, I, I wasn't, you. you know, it's like when, um, oh God, I'm trying to think of a somewhat good example, like, <laughs> like a cat that falls into a bathtub of water, <laughs> but then they revisit the tub not filled with water. Like you're unsure if like oh, you're going to wow. be walking through water. Why is, like, why does that analogy make so much sense to me? Like you pulled that out of your butt, but like, I really, I, I, really I pulled that out of my spleen actually. Out of your spleen. Um, but I really actually understood and followed that entire analogy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm happy it works. This is why we're friends. No, Communication. Communication. <laughs> Wet paws. No, but <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, I, that, because of my past experiences that in that type of class and just in school that did make me a little bit more reserved, I definitely missed out on quite a good amount of friendships that, um, probably potential good friendships that I could have had today mm. still, but because I was a little bit of a different way in school, I missed out on those chances. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends at the time too, um, I don't know if I ever told you this, they were a little bit on the nice way I can say it, they were a little bit on the controlling side. Like, they'd almost be upset if yeah. I was getting closer to other people yeah. outside of our clique. Yeah. Well, and that that happens, like, I can't say that I've never felt those feelings of, like, oh, but you're my friend. <laughs> like, oh, same, yeah. I, I think we've all felt them, and I think it goes... It, it comes from that insecurity we have within ourselves of like wait but this is my stability right now you can't take this situation away from me you mean there's a threat? change <laughs> right there's a threat of change how dare you um so i think that that's kind of where that comes from but it's m like you can have feelings of jealousy it's more so how you how you act on them that that's what yes. the important thing is you can have whatever negative emotions and feelings and thoughts you want to have but how you decide to handle them and act on them is is what counts. It's interesting you mentioned that too, thinking about the whole communication thing and friendships that I know I had I had to accept the fact that we we can't necessarily control how someone else is going to communicate mm. with us. We can control how we communicate and how we take yeah. certain things, but unfortunately we can't we can't change. I I know like in the past I always I would, uh, if I met someone romantically or even certain friendships, mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, I love this person and I'd love them even more if I could change this one thing <laughs> about yes. them. And that's definitely a little yeah. bit toxic in a no, way like we it's, can't. It's, that's a really important piece that I think everybody deals with. We all hate not having control. Let's be real. Um, we all really hate when there's a situation that is out of our hands. Yeah. Um, and... I think that it's so important when you have a friend that communicates a w in a way that's really different from you that you really don't try to change their style of communication yeah. um, because it's not you're, you're not the person that gets to tell them how to be who they're going to be. They're going to be who they're going to be. <laughs> and it's, you know, you you don't get that kind of power over them. Um, but what you can do is you can talk about solutions with that person of meeting in the middle more if you feel like it's kind of more one-sided. You can also, and boundaries have a big, this just kind of like made me go into another thought, boundaries have a big role in this too. Yeah. Um, certain people have, you know, 
different anxieties or traumas or anything to where they deal with stuff a certain way and they're going to want to talk about things in a way that's within their comfort zone. And it might be in a way that you don't respond well to. So you really have to just, you don't have to be completely open as a communicator in order to have a successful communication in a friendship. You just need to be able to meet the other person in a way to where you're both comfortable instead of having one person be really uncomfortable and the other person, you know, being totally happy with how things are. Yeah. I, um, yeah, what I was, with the different types of relationships I was realizing this morning was I wasn't even thinking about until today about, um, cause like I said, we met in school. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about, um, relationships with people at work. Like, that's such mm. a common type of relationship yeah. and we're at we're at our workplace for so many hours a day right. that obvious like sometimes to get through the day especially if people don't love the job that they're doing it's like you need those work friendships you do in a way but i what i was thinking about especially um with the jobs that i've left and certain people that i've kind of gotten out of touch with mm -hmm. is i realized um a lot of those friendships were built um, off of convenience and yeah. not so much a common yeah. interest. So yeah. then when you do get into a weird like argument or not right. even an argument, but a weird like communication conflict, mm -hmm. it's like, I, it feels different because it's like, oh, yeah. like yeah. this is, you know, leaving certain situations, you end up just becoming like an acquaintance with certain people. Right. or Right. And I think that that has to do with, okay, and speaking to the work example in particular, but this can, this principle can be like attributed to other, you know, other examples of when people meet. But I think that with work, when you meet a friend at work and they, they kind of just stay your work friend, you could be super close at work. Like I've had work friendships to where, you know, it would, if somebody walked in and saw us interacting, you would think we're best friends at work and probably outside of work. But Sometimes I really only interact with those people at work. Yeah. And that's just like, that's just how we get through the shift. It's how we deal. But when we try to navigate those friendships outside of work, sometimes conflict happens because it's like, okay, wait a minute, you're acting differently than you would, um, you know, when we had this common goal and this common battle we were facing now now this is a different setting and, yeah. and you're acting a little different or yeah. you know other other hidden traits might come up or just that maybe you don't have any conflicts with this person at work because you both have this like thing that you're against but now you have the opportunity for conflict with each other when you're outside of work and when it comes up you don't like how the person responds it's, no. there's a lot of different reasons for why that happens, but it, it is really, another hair towards my face. <laughs> it is really interesting how that, um, how that can be so different. Like I've had work friendships to where I've become really close with that person outside of work and have man maintained that relationship. And then I've had work relationships to where it's like, no, no, we're just work friends. Yeah. We shouldn't experiment beyond work friends. <laughs> Fortunately, I do have two close friends still that I met at work. Mm -hmm. And then it, outside of work and even in work too, the bond grew stronger because yeah. there were actually a lot more things we had in common. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's always nice because the majority of the work friends, yeah, you do tend to lose yeah. over time or just... Either whether it's falling out of touch or not anything necessarily like yeah. bad, but yeah, it doesn't have to be a negative event that prompts it. Sometimes it's just we just get busy, <laughs> kind of like in high school when you tell everybody you're gonna keep in touch, and then you all graduate and you're like, you just go. It's like everybody spreads like like a bunch of babies hatching from an egg or something. It's just <laughs> like, all right, bye. <laughs> I feel like because I was quite a, I would say I was quite a toxic person. I've mentioned it during high school years that for me, my mindset was, if we're not going to be friends anymore, like, we need to fight to end it. <laughs> like, there's no, like, falling out of touch. Like, you need to fucking hate me. <laughs> and that's what I did. <laughs> um, I mean, having known you for as long as I have, that's not really that far off from the truth. <laughs> what are you trying to say? No. I mean... I don't know. You want to fight about it? Conflict. <laughs> oh my god. 
No, it's like that Family Guy episode. What, what was that guy? He was like, what, you want to fight about it? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember what well, I, I wanted was. to say Fat Polly, but that's not the same. No, I, I was thinking Fat Polly at first, but I'm like, it can't be Fat Polly. Because they end up like, well, actually. Well, he gets shot. It might be Fat Polly. <laughs> Maybe it was. Or it just might have been from that episode. Now I can't remember. Yeah, I can't either. Darn it. <laughs> Danger. <laughs> I think before um, another commercial break, was there anything else you wanted to add with that topic? I can't think of anything. <laughs> I, you know me. Me coming up with prompts, it just doesn't really happen. I'm much more of a reactive person when it comes to these than like... actually coming up with the stuff, which is probably why I've never had my own podcast. <laughs> Trust me, there's weeks where, yeah, I'll be like, okay, topics, <laughs> topics, topics. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> just... Ideas. <laughs> so then you sit for another 24 hours and have nothing. <laughs> well, and then I do the walk talk episodes, and then it's like, oh, crap. Like, if I did a walk talk episode, right. do I get to also put it on the podcast, or did I already talk about it enough to where, nope, I can't. Like, it's a whole separate. So then I just, yeah, I double-edged sword there. Double-edged sword. <laughs> And I'm going to do in that. Um, I did write down some questions for when that I could just add before the commercial break. When it comes to when you have that conflict in communication. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I thought, when I read into these questions, I thought about those specific moments in life where especially, um, I know we're talking about friendships. I really think about a specific romantic relationship with this case because I mm. think... I I think about it and I just think how, regardless of how I communicated, this person was going to communicate the way they were most comfortable with, no matter what. And so these questions kind of came to mind where you kind of have to ask yourself, one, is this relationship important enough to let the issue go without discussion or without the response you want? Mm. The second question, is the relationship more important than the personal value at stake? And three, will your life be neg negatively affected if you push the issue? I love those questions. Like, I want to, like, tattoo those on my face. <laughs> Seriously, though. Like, I want one on each are, femur. Those are questions that you should always ask yourself every time you're in conflict. And, yeah. Or at least, like, with somebody that you're getting to know and it's, like, one of your first few conflicts with them or something. But it's so important to look at like the cost of what the situation is going to be. Are you going to be losing some of your own personal values um, or your own personal needs um, if you kind of engage with this person in a certain way or if you kind of give in to their communication in some fashion? Um, the other thing you need to look at too is look at the relationship or friendship in this case as a whole and decide, okay, if I decide to be giving in this conflict, do I feel like in other aspects of the friendship, those those sacrifices that I'm about to make are being reciprocated? Do I feel like it's a give and take friendship or do I feel like it's all give or yeah. all take or, you know, you have, you have to really look at things as a whole. Um, I've heard of people who have had kind of doormat treatment to where, like, yeah. they've been the doormat friend and the other friend is just constantly just take and take and take. And even for a while, it might seem like they're, you know, doing things for you. It might seem like they're, you know, kind of on your side and there for you. But when you really look at the actions and words of this other person, you might discover otherwise when you take a step back and really examine it. So these are important thoughts to just kind of have when you're trying to navigate conflict with a friendship or um, communication with a friendship, I should say. Yeah, no, I wish I knew these questions back then and yeah. that I'm going to try to apply a little bit more now in life because yeah. there's, yeah, there are certain moments in life where I did sacrifice personal values, I think, and then mm -hmm. there's certain moments where the issue really, I don't think, was necessarily a huge issue, but I kept pushing it anyway, and yeah. it caused that yeah. break. Yeah, I've definitely done that where I've pushed, I've pushed the issue before, and then it's funny because then it gets to this bigger level, 
in like the the conflict just rises to this whole other and now rise right. up. <laughs> <laughs> it just rises to this whole other place where you didn't want it to go and then then you have that moment of okay i didn't really want it to get here but now we're here no. and now i've committed to this to my side of where I am with this, you know, it, then it's really hard. This is why we're here. <laughs> this is why we're here. Um, then it just, it really, you, you have to figure out, okay, now do I dial it back and do I, you know, contradict what I said two minutes ago or do I keep this going? And it's, then it just gets messy. So you really, if you're going to pick a battle, really commit to it and pick it and know that you're picking it for the right reasons. Pick your battles, not your nose, <laughs> is how we're going to end that segment <laughs> right there. <laughs> we're going to take one more commercial break before the last topic. We will be right back. And we are back. So that was definitely um, the longest commercial break I've ever taken Just so far. Just a few hours. Just about four hours. <laughs> but you guys will only see a couple seconds. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! Um, <laughs> yes. That went better the first time. Anyway, so, <laughs> so before the um, last commercial break, we were talking about communication differences between um, friend between friendships, the different types and different communicators within a friendship. Now we're going to talk about communication differences between the genders, the, the, men, the men and the women. That's what's on the agenda. <laughs> And I just wanted to acknowledge that I thought of this topic because of, not because of just the typical um, stereotypes with how men and women can't, um, they don't ever communicate the same way. I think about how our friendship, we do communicate a little more similar than the average mm -hmm. man and woman. Yeah, I'm pretty convinced we share a brain. <laughs> After, yeah, <laughs> after today. A yeah. Cancer and a Scorpio sharing a brain, who knew? <laughs> Water signs. <laughs> if, water signs. For all you astrology fans, <laughs> we're water. Uh, so, <laughs> before we just laugh the whole last part of this. Um, yeah, I personally, for me, I don't have, I um, have stronger relationships with, um, my female friends and when it comes to making male friends or male interpersonal relationships there's been a little bit more of a struggle for me with that um regardless of you know normally two guys becoming friends they kind of have more um similar communication styles where for me it's definitely been more of a clash compared to talking to mm. women yeah i definitely can relate because i've had um, and we've talked about this, but I've had similar experiences when it comes to, um, having female friends. I find that more of my insecurities come out or at least come to the surface when I'm trying to communicate with people of the same gender. And it doesn't really matter what role, um, that relationship is, whether it's, you know, work relationship, friendship, whatever it is. Um, and then... The other thing I notice is that when I'm communicating with the opposite gender, those insecurities aren't really there. I don't feel like I have to make more of an effort to fit in. Mm. And I think that it depends on each person's life experiences that kind of shapes that um, pattern for them. Yeah. Like for me, I know I have a lot of trauma involving female friends or, um, you know, the other things with like bullying that I've dealt with and things like that. But... I think that it really just depends on each person because some people it's like no I only get along with my gender you know and yeah. they struggle a lot with the opposite gender it's I think it varies yeah no I agree with that I I noticed too with my female friendships at least with the current ones that I have the few that I consider my close friends they um <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were flipping me off no <laughs> That's what like I was, those gifs I was like, that sorry. are like, me, me, me. <laughs> sorry, best friends. <laughs> I, there's a whole story behind 
why I say close I, Okay, friends. I gave him crap because I listened to one of his solo episodes <laughs> and he mentioned something that like, uh, I think it was the yoga mat you were talking about. Where yes, like, oh, I said a one close of my friend. close friends gave this to me and I said, not just a close friend, the close friend <laughs> so or something like that. So I gave him crap. It was I was, okay, I'm going to have to explain you that, have to be there. that whole thing <laughs> after that. What I was going to fi finish saying is that... I um I feel like my female friends, my close ones, are, it's not gonna be the same anymore. No, you can't take it seriously. They um are more I would say like more tomboyish in a way. Whoa. Well like well, I feel attacked. Oh boy. But no, it's maybe true. not. It's true. Twenty twenty, I'm supposed to feel attacked in everything you say. Um but but no, I I actually would agree. I have some more tomboyish qualities, and I'm also a nerd, and we both get along because of nerd things. Well, I think, because, so. yeah, normally, <laughs> you know, the whole stereotype that women are more emotional and men are more, like, direct with their communication, I feel like with, like, a tomboyish woman, you kind of have, like, the best of both worlds, because you have... A, You're welcome, world. <laughs> like, you have, like, <laughs> you have the woman part where, like, they are compassionate, but then they're not, like, having all the drama or, like, the over-emotional reactions, like, quick reaction stuff. Now, remember to clarify that those are stereotypical. Yeah, stereotypical. <laughs> reactions. Reactions. Because otherwise you've got to get an uproar of women on here. And also, I know, well, and the audience is around 50-50%. Well... Not a true 50-50. There are some other specified. No non-binary listeners ah, yet. But gotcha. the other specified. Yeah, I don't know how many um, different genders are counted in the other. Because it just says male, female, other, non-binary. Uh, but then gotcha. they have non-binary as a separate. Yeah. Which is interesting. So, yeah, I do find that interesting too. But um, what was I going to say? So... I, I think that it's important to remember that some of the stuff that we're referring to is very much going off of the stereotypical yeah. what you, you know, what people typically think of. Um, but obviously there are certain circumstances, like if you have, um, and, I, and I think it's interesting to think about like how femininity and masculine, masculinity um, can affect communication styles, but I think it's a lot more about what you grew up with and you know how you're raised what communication styles you see you see displayed throughout your life that you kind of um what's the word are influenced by yeah. and and i think that that more so shapes you it, i also think those things plus you know masculinity and femininity plus your basic needs as a human being and how your personality forms. I think all of that ties into communication. It's actually, in my opinion, a really complicated, complex thing to where you can't just point at one thing and be like, oh, that's why you communicate that way. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> just a little PSA, I guess. <laughs> I, I think I've been guilty of, um, when I just think about, like, past friends or past situations, I think I've always wanted, like... And they say, too, in psychology, I think about the DSM-5, where, yeah. like, you're not supposed to put... Pe like, people don't fall in perfect boxes. You're not supposed oh. to... Like, as much as we want to do that, our minds <laughs> do that sometimes, we're not... You're not supposed to do that. There's always gray matter <laughs> in a lot of situations. And I think I would um, look at certain friendships or just certain individuals and almost, like, want an answer behind why they do act a certain way. And some people do things just because, without really much, like... Yeah. Um, trauma or history or anything like that. It's, it's it's really funny though because I feel like I feel like there's also like an education piece to it. I feel like some people who don't know better can't do better. So Somet I feel like yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's like a, a poor poor communication skills can just mean that there's a lack of education on communication skills too. And but that obviously that's not always the case. It's not like either that or the other. It's, you know, there's a bunch of different reasons why somebody can be shaped into, you know, the type of person they are, the type of behaviors they display. But I always do find it so interesting because part of why I'm so into the field that I'm in is that I like to dissect everything. And I yeah. like to say, oh, this is why they do that. And this is why this happens. And 
And then in turn, I end up discovering a whole bunch of stuff about myself that some of which I'm like, oh, I don't want that on my radar now. I don't want to know that. Water <laughs> signs that overanalyze. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's both of us to a T. I, th I think I'm getting a little better. I... I also haven't been dating much, so that could explain why. It's kind of like, I'm not finding gold, but I'm also not out there with a metal detector either. So. You and your analogies today. <laughs> They're coming right out of the spleen. <laughs> not the butt, like you said earlier. It's out the butt. Speaking of, I feel like I need to communicate the reason why I say close friends and not best friends. I need to get this out. I actually was going to say it in a solo episode. Oh, here's a pure example of resolving conflict. <laughs> Well, she walks out the door after this, we never talk again. <laughs> <Baffly. So, laughs> By me. So, um, yeah, so reason, it kind of dates back to MySpace days. Oh, God. And, and just, The uh, eight friendships. So, yeah, so for anyone who is younger than old, <laughs> that doesn't know about MySpace. Apparently, my, we're where old starts. The old category <laughs> starts with us, and then just goes up from there. MySpace was the social media that was big before Facebook, and by the way, there was a lot of cool features with MySpace I'm that just saying, I, MySpace I do miss. was kind of rocking. Like, you got to, I mean, everyone was, like, a graphic designer with designing their, their backgrounds. With, I knew, like, a lot of HTML code. It was cool. Yes, I was just going to say, you could code so many things to it. But anyways. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, and there was, like, music you could put and all that cool mm -hmm. stuff. But there was a top friends thing, and <laughs> I, we, I was going to say, we didn't get... Um, we weren't as close or really knew each other when MySpace was still super big. But so did I don't... we even use it with each other? Because... No, I actually did find out we were friends on MySpace. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I remember That's that. That's crazy. I'll I just look that up. I just don't think we ever put each other on the top or anything. Oh, wow. Like that. By the way, for anybody who doesn't know, yes, MySpace is actually still around, <laughs> but it's very different from... When, oh, yeah. From sucks. back in the day, like we're talking about, it's extremely different. Um, and it's like, you can still access your old photos from it, but you have to go through a bunch weird. of like background stuff to get to it. And, and I think it only it's... saved like three of my photos oh, <laughs> last weird. time I checked. And... Yeah, it's, it was difficult to find, but I had to try and like, cause I had a bunch of old photos on there from like years and years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I was trying to find them and I actually did get them off of there, but, um, but yeah, it is still around. It just, if you try and look at it now and try and find out what we're talking about, for those that don't know, it's like, oh, yeah, you're not going to find it. it. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not as much fun now. What is funny, though, is I, some Can't article came, <laughs> some article came up, watch, we, you're going to go check now, and we weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm positive we were, but um, what's funny is I saw an article, too, where it's just funny to think about, um, I found Kim Kardashian's MySpace. Stop uh, before it. she was famous. What? With a profile, like, just like her, the average like, person. Agents Taylor is... Swift's profile and oh, stuff. Oh, wow. It's just funny. I People bet you never they're, grow they're up. They're agents <laughs> and managers and publi publicists and stuff. I bet you they don't even know that those are <laughs> They're, like, just, exist. yeah. They do, yeah. <laughs> they deleted, like, maybe all their yeah. other stuff, and well, that was just you, aborted. When you Google a celebrity now, the top things that come up are, like, their Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and, like... We could go down to a whole thing of social media if you can't tell. But, but yeah, like, it's rare to find some of that really old stuff like the MySpace. And I don't know if any of you remember Tag, but Tag was also another uh, social media thing. It I was, do. We're getting off track. Yeah. We're getting off track. <laughs> I'm tagging back in. Yeah. <laughs> so, you. there was a top friends on MySpace. And besides that, I had... Um, just growing up, like I've mentioned when I was growing up in like junior high, high school, I was, I was going to say like, I blame the bullying, but I don't really want to blame like any outside factors to why I was becoming a shitty person at the end of the day. It's Ooh. my fault, but obviously there were outside factors that kind of pushed me in certain directions or helped me be like, here's a toxic tree. Here's another. <laughs> Ooh, a toxic. They inspired <laughs> toxic and influenced him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and just. Yeah, so, um, I would believe that you could only have one best friend. Like, when you had a best friend, yeah. it was just one. Like, people would be like, um, I almost said names. I don't want to, like, put anyone's personal names <laughs> that I used to be friends with. But one of, I would just say one of my old friends would be like, you're my best friend. And then they would say, like, 
their, um, someone else was their best friend in our friend group, and I'd be like, I'm your only fucking friend, what the fuck? <laughs> that just made me think of Stewie Griffin, when he's like, how dare you? And like, <laughs> just, I just see you as like the creepy man peeping around the corner as you witness them saying you're my best friend to somebody else, and you're like, how dare you? And like, plot their murder. And well, stuff. I know this next name of this friend I know I can use, because she's been, she's been on the podcast, on season the one, podcast. the podcast, <laughs> uh, my friend Steph, she, um, Hi, Steph. her and I, we've been friends for many years and that was before I have the friends that I have now. She was that best friend. Mm -hmm. Well, she had met, um, this other girl in high school and that girl was very, I just realized like we were just, <laughs> Steph didn't only meet one possessive friend, she met two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because that girl was very like we got very serious about who was in the number one spot and i would always use like well the history like i knew her longer like i'd always use that and this other yeah. girl would be like when we go to school together and mm. i'd be like you also could die <laughs> i just don't know you know and frank is have... a really spiritual and compassionate person <laughs> we got no animosity whatsoever so towards anyone. ironically um i'm also good with computers and technology and back then it was um compared to now it was easier to hack things and um True. unfortunately um, Steph also had not just one friend good with technology, but two friends <laughs> were good. And we both would actually go into her MySpace and change <laughs> and put ourselves as the number one. This is and, one of the greatest stories I've ever heard. <laughs> so I, because of all, long story short, because of all that, and just like, and even if I do... And just me thinking about how if I tell someone they're my best friend and just that fear of someone else being like, but I'm your best friend. <laughs> and so I just say close friends and then not to, and then I was going to say this, not to like offend you or offend like any of my close friends. It's 2020, but, I'm going to be offended. <laughs> well, I feel like also you just never, well, you know, I think if anything, I think about a recent friendship that mm -hmm. had ended. You just never know what could happen. Yeah. So I just like to say my close friends, but at the end of the day, I make it, I try to make it into a positive thing where it's my You're close, my close friend, because how I view my close, <laughs> close friends, I'll just say now there's four of you yeah. <laughs> and you're one of them and it's my circle of friends, my right, close right. circle of friends. That's how I identify right. that. And we're like a group. Well, <laughs> we're, a <unity. laughs> we're a posse. We, most of us have been on a trampoline together. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so true though. No, we all were on a trampoline together. It was Well, three of, of the four of you. Well, I don't count as my own best friend. Oh, close yeah. friend. Close no, that's friend. That's right. That's right. I just said best. <laughs> you just you just took I'm your a entire, narcissist. Your entire like what was it? Um Oh, come on. Not There's a word. You know that word there that are you have words. like a belief and like like your your entire uh, somebody viewing this or listening <laughs> to this is going to think of the word. Entire... Maybe theory. Okay, we'll go with theory. His entire thing he just said, he just took it and you like shat on theory. it. <laughs> you said we're going to go with theory and you said thing. I can't with this one. <laughs> Communication <laughs> between different genders. <laughs> oh no. Teddy, how are you feeling about this? Teddy's sleeping on my hand down here for anybody who's unsure of where he exists. He actually is here. Um... But, what was I going to say? For me, it's kind of funny you say that because for the longest time, I was very much like, no, you only have one best friend. Oh, you too? I was. I actually was. <laughs> Maybe that's why we're friends. And that's probably why we're friends. I actually was like that. But it turned into, like, and I would feel serious about it, but I, I really think, and this goes back to, I think something I said earlier is that stability factor. I was yeah. like, okay, my, you know, my world could be falling apart, but I have this best friend. Like, That's how I this person's it, yeah. my best friend, you know? And now I see it as, um, I can have multiple best friends and each one can be just as special to me in their own way. Yes. And I don't, I just say best friends just cause it like, that feels like a step above close friends to me. Like labels are so, they, they mean so, something different for each person I feel yeah. like. But for me, it's like, okay, you know, acquaintances, friends, 
good friends, close friends, best friends. I mean, good friend and close friend are kind of the same to me, but, but yeah, I, I, I feel like there's, um, there's something extra with best friend. Cause it's like, okay, I have my circle, but you guys are my inner circle, you know, there's, yeah. like I could have people I'm good friends with, but if I'm in a jam or if I'm having a really hard time, I'm not calling them necessarily first. I'm calling my yeah. best friends first. The way I, I, and I definitely get that. I, um, the way I identify it is um i <laughs> it's gonna sound like mean girls you have your close friends <laughs> and your friends <laughs> okay you have your cousins and then you have first cousins <laughs> so i do close friends friends which kind of at this point <laughs> with quarantine and everything are starting to borderline we with acquaintances no <laughs> <laughs> so because at the end of the day let's be honest all of us just have a few good friends when you yep. become an adult pretty much <laughs> You think you're going to have like a hundred of them? Like, let me tell you, I can't tell you how many times I said to my high school friends, I'm going to keep in touch with you. And like, really like, was like, raw about it. And I, most of them that I said that to, we either see each other at the reunions or we like, like each other's Facebook stuff. And we're like, yep, we kept in touch. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's sufficient. <laughs> um, and then there's some that, once in a blue moon I'll see and you know we'll kind of just catch up have a little interaction here and there but it's very rare and mm -hmm. that's just that's just pretty much it but that's just what happens that's life I one one thing I like that you said was about um now I'm about to forget it because <laughs> I've been holding on to it too long about oh, interrupt me next time <laughs> I, 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 I'll just be right in the middle just in case headphone users I don't want to scream but you'll be talking like hey <laughs> just scream but <laughs> listen <laughs> deep voice Navi from yes. from the Legend of Zelda hey listen uh, <laughs> but um no I liked what you said about um a best friend being a constant because yeah. Me, um, growing up, like I said, my friend Steph was a friend since childhood. Mm -hmm. And there's a funny story how we met. I don't remember if her and I mentioned it, but we will eventually. <laughs> we just, we met in a special, wow, no pun intended. We met in a special <laughs> circumstance. <laughs> but <laughs> I think you caught on. But, um, I so, um, I like that you said that just because with my, like, my childhood can, regardless of, like, you know, I didn't come from a rich household or anything like that, but it's still... If anything, my childhood really taught me that regardless of what you own, you can still live a happy life. I was a very happy mm -hmm. child for the most part, but then once it was like getting towards like 11 years old, um, that's when I lost my uncle. Mm -hmm. I um, A few of my friends had died or committed suicide and just like lost their lives and you know, just very unfortunate ways at very young ages at like nine, 10 years old and stuff so Steph was that constant that I had through all that yeah. darkness it was like okay well she's still there like you said yeah. like that person's still there that type of stuff that type of trauma especially at such a young age it like imprints on you and it it really yeah. shapes um it shapes how you view the world and it shapes how you deal with hard things going forward and it gives you a it makes you look at the world through with like a set of glasses on that you can't take off because now you have a totally different view. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it really does. People don't understand how, you know, you can say, Oh yeah, children are really resilient and they are, um, because they have this innate drive to just keep going and keep dealing. Mm -hmm. But you have to also understand that, Stuff like that, it really is impactful on children. So I, I think it's I think it's interesting to think about how the things that happened back then, how they shaped something like communication for you, even all these years later, and how you know whatever experiences you had with same gender and opposite gender, how those things could have shaped you now. You know, I th I think that it's really interesting to What's... think about that. What I just thought of, too, is those friends were all uh, male yeah. friends, which is which is interesting, too, because um, there was I just, I just remember for me, at least, I mean, I think in general, male friendships could be easy in a way, because I just I think about how back then how they did seem very effortless. I could also just be because we were younger age and when you're a kid, it's there's not like 
this facade you have to put up like when mm. you're an adult sometimes there's like this act you have to or this yeah. guard you have to put up where when yeah. you're a kid it's like hit me yeah. <laughs> and your hands are just out <laughs> although i will i will say i tried so hard with fitting in because i struggled so much with it when i was a kid i mm. always felt like an outsider even in a group that i was quote unquote in with i felt like an outsider mm. and and i think that even back then i was practicing how to put on a facade because i was trying to be what other people wanted and a big part of that was communication because kids my age weren't talking about the things that I wanted to talk about necessarily and vice versa I wasn't talking about the things they wanted to talk about so I I was trying to adjust hoping it would make me fit in more and the, there's just it's so interesting when you think of like how big of a role communication really actually plays from a young age and how over a person's lifetime their communication styles can change and how it can develop into something totally different because now I'm like okay I'm here good luck with me <laughs> That's, yeah, I mean, I, I guess was fortunate in a way where I guess the stuff I was talking about, um, was the, si were similar interests that other kids at school mm -hmm. had, at least the school that I went to, or at least enough kids had right. the interest. Um, because yeah, like I was into, I mean, I'm still into Pokemon, but I was into <laughs> Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! And, but then... Um, but then at the same time, I had a friend introduce me to Harry Potter. And yeah. what's funny is when we were kids, that's like when the first Harry Potter came out. Yeah. When at least when I was I was in elementary when same. it came out. It's really weird crazy. to think about it that way. That basically we're like the same ages as people like um, uh, Wow, really, uh, Emma Watson and yeah. Daniel Radcliffe and yeah. Rupert Grint. It's really, it's really interesting to think of like that. <laughs> oh, Rupert. <laughs> right? Oh, Rupert. That entire uh, cast are basically our ages right now, and we pretty much grew up with watching them. Yeah. That's weird. I, cause I, re I remember going into the theater for Me too. the first movie. I don't know if I went for the first movie, but I definitely like the first went for at least like some of them. I experienced that. It's just weird. But um, was there anything else you wanted to share? about this topic or I'm really trying to think general. like <laughs> usually I have like something prepared for something like this but like usually I'm pretty good at responding on the fly with questions like, but like a good cast off <laughs> but if somebody is like oh what do you you know is there anything else you want to just say I'm kind of like Merp. it's only because I don't know what to say next <laughs> so, I have to, so I have to put my attention I, on stuff. um I just think that when it comes to communication, just know that it's bigger than you. Oh, know yeah. that it's, you know, your way of communicating is not always going to be 110% right. right. And believe me, I struggle with this more than you know, because I've studied, given the field I work in, I've studied so many ways of communicating. And I'm like, oh, I know this. You just do A, B, and C. But that doesn't mean everything I quote unquote know is going to be exactly what it's supposed to be for every single person on the planet. Um, you, you just really have to remember that when you're communicating with somebody, it is about much more than you. It's, there's a whole other half that it's also about. To add to that, communicating is also, you know, I, I took communication very at face value, mm -hmm. where communicating was talking not necessarily to someone, but talking at someone. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, communication's words. I'll just throw as many words at someone, <laughs> and that's and I'm talking. I will confuse them. <laughs> so if I'm talking, that's communicating. But there's so many different ways to communicate, and sometimes yeah. silence or um, walking away from a situation is just another way of communicating. It's so true. There's so many nonverbal forms of communication that people don't they're not conscious of and they're yeah. not cognizant of um you could be saying the absolute nicest things but if you're sitting there with like this um oh there was a word for this too this like nasty look on your face and you got your arms crossed and you're like huffing and puffing at the person clearly whatever nice things you're saying don't really count <laughs> so <laughs> just something for you all to keep in mind <laughs> 
Well, I think we can end it on that note for you guys. We probably went a little over on our segments, but yeah, whatever. probably. It's, it's not a show on TV, so we're good. <laughs> um, I want to thank today's sponsor for this episode. I want to thank my good friend Zapphire for... <laughs> I just thought of how I identify <laughs> as, a, as a good friend. Oh, God, what, where does good friend fit on, on the I totem pole? I don't know pole? where you are on the totem pole, Zapphire, but <laughs> nice job with the music. But... <laughs> Yes, um, he does the intro and the outro music. You should check him out on Spotify, Apple, I almost said Apple Podcasts, Apple Music. His his uh, newest stuff is coming out soon, isn't it? Sometime. Or did it already come out? It's not out yet. Okay, it's going to be yeah. coming out soon, soonish. Can't really give away too much, but it gotcha. will be coming. <laughs> There's a couple <laughs> songs out now. The intro and outro music actually isn't out officially yet, which is exciting, you know. It is kind of exciting. <laughs> I think I say that almost every time too, though. But um, <laughs> I want to thank each and every one of you for not only listening, but for watching as well and for supporting me. Um, I just like to remind people too that I have a Patreon account now and it would help so much just to help cover certain equipment costs um, and things like, because um, I just thought like you might be thinking, oh, well, you bought the equipment already, but there's more um, besides the time that I put in where like obviously time equals money there. Um, I use programs like Adobe Premiere Pro, which um, are just licensed, which means you're paying every year. Mm -hmm. And that is like at least a couple hundred. Essentially, so, this this show is not free to do. No. Like people can say, oh, you just take your phone and put it somewhere and film. There's so much more that goes into that, and I personally have witnessed a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that Frank does. He not only has to record these shows with certain equipment, but he also has to then take sometimes hours to edit them and make sure that they're of acceptable quality, you know, by his standards to put out there for you guys. And there's a lot of, if any of you, you know, really pay attention to his page, he has a very you know, significant following of people who really appreciate these, myself included. Um, there's often, yeah, you, um, there's often times where I'll watch either his walk talks or I'll listen, or in this case, watch, because there's, you know, the two ways of hearing it now, the podcast, um, and I'll take something away from it. And I'm like, you know, if this wasn't around, it, it would kind of suck a little, you know, that it would be, you know, one less good thing out there. So, Definitely, if you have the means, if you have the time, and if you care about keeping this show going because it is a good thing and it should be kept going, definitely check out the Patreon and see what you can do to help. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And, <laughs> and times are tough, um, but at the end of the day, you're, you might be subscribed to one too many OnlyFan accounts and you can support <laughs> me instead. <laughs> and I will give you a little bit more value. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that note, I hope everyone has a super special <laughs> awesome day. Bye.